What if a grass could be stronger than steel, yet softer than silk? How can a single plant be transformed into a floor that withstands a hammer blow, and at the same time, into a fabric that breathes better than cotton? Bamboo grows so fast it can shoot up by a meter in a single day, and a single plantation can be harvested for decades without ever being replanted. Every year, over 30 million tons of products are made from it, from bridges and houses to toothbrushes and cars. But there is one thing that even the largest producers don't talk about. Watch until the end and you will learn a secret that will change your perception of this incredible plant forever. It all begins on vast bamboo plantations that cover millions of hectares across the globe. These are not wild, chaotic jungles, but meticulously managed farms. Unlike a forest, a bamboo grove never needs replanting. When a single stalk or culm is cut, its sprawling underground root system, known as a rhizome, immediately sends up new shoots. This makes it one of the most sustainable resources on the planet. Furthermore, a bamboo forest absorbs 35% more carbon dioxide and produces 35% more oxygen than an equivalent area of trees. Harvesters, armed with simple machetes or handsaws, selectively cut only the mature culms. A single mature comb can reach 18 meters in height and weigh over 45 kilograms, making its transportation a complex logistical challenge. When these green towers arrive at the processing plant, the radical transformation begins. First, the long combs are cut into manageable sections. They are then fed into a special machine that, with a deafening crack, splits the round sections into long strips the next step is to strip away the outer green skin and the inner nodes, leaving clean, pale bamboo planks. But hidden within these planks is an enemy of durability, the starches and sugars that are a favorite food for insects and mold. After this, the planks are sent for drying. Some producers air dry them, but for industrial scale, they are loaded into giant kilns where they spend several days until their moisture content drops from 50% down to an ideal 8 to 10%. This stage is critical. Any residual moisture can lead to warping and cracking in the final product. But the journey from an 18-meter calm to a smooth floorboard requires even more impressive engineering. The dried planks are passed through milling machines that give them a perfect rectangular shape. Then, a process begins that looks like the preparation of an industrial lasagna. Here, the bamboo planks aren't just glued together, they're completely shredded into long fibers, mixed with an eco-friendly resin and loaded into enormous steel presses. Under a hellish pressure, reaching over 200 kilograms per square centimeter and high temperature, this mass is forged into an extremely dense monolithic block. The hardness of this strand-woven flooring can exceed 5,000 on the Jonka scale, making it more than three times harder than oak and more scratch-resistant than most traditional hardwoods. However, hardness is just one of bamboo's identities. Its other superpower is the ability to become something incredibly soft and silky. This, known as the viscose process, 
begins by grinding raw bamboo into a cellulose pulp. This pulp is then steeped in a solution of sodium hydroxide and then carbon disulfide, which transforms it into a thick, viscous liquid. This honey-like liquid is forced under pressure through the tiny holes of a metal plate called a spinneret. Imagine a microscopic shower head. As the thin jets emerge, they enter a bath of sulfuric acid, where they instantly solidify into endlessly long filaments. These filaments are then washed, bleached, dried, and spun into a yarn, from which the final fabric is woven. Over 30 million tons of bamboo are harvested globally each year, and this figure is only growing. From kitchen cutting boards and toothbrushes to scaffolding that can bear the weight of concrete and trim elements in premium cars, this giant grass proves its versatility. It is a testament to how nature, multiplied by human ingenuity, can offer sustainable, strong, and beautiful solutions to countless challenges transforming a fast-growing comb into the gold of the modern world. Bamboo grows both in the wild and on specially cultivated plantations. It is cultivated for the production of building materials, textiles, paper, interior design products, and as a source of biomass. In the wild, there are over a thousand different species of bamboo. It is a perennial, evergreen plant belonging to the grass family. Bamboo is known for its extraordinarily rapid growth. Some species can grow several dozen centimeters in a single day. Bamboo flowers very rarely, and after flowering and producing seed, the plant usually dies. Cultivating bamboo requires specific knowledge and care, including correct planting, regular watering, and choosing the right variety for a specific climate. Every minute, thousands of kilometers of old cable vanish from our world. They're torn from the walls of houses, factories, and machines. And all of this scrap is reborn as pure copper, a hidden treasure more vital than gold for our modern world. Imagine it. Coils of wire that yesterday lay forgotten in a scrapyard are today melting in a furnace at over 1100 degrees Celsius, hotter than a volcano. But the most remarkable part? Copper can be reborn infinitely. So the wire that lit your room 20 years ago might be powering an electric car tomorrow. And stay with me, because at the end, I'll reveal a secret this metal's been hiding, and it will change the way you see copper forever. Every wire you see around you, from old charging cables to industrial coils, has a story. It was part of something, conducting power, carrying signals, bringing things to life. But time moves on, technology is upgraded, machinery replaced, and these cables become waste. But this is where their second life begins. The scrap is gathered from everywhere, homes, offices, demolition sites, even old vehicles. A vast, unseen logistics network of lorries, containers, and depots comes to life. It's a treasure hunt, but the prize is metal and plastic, twisted together in a tangled mess. The first stop, the factory floor. Here, the cables pass through the hands of experienced operators who aren't just sorting, they're industrial archaeologists. This is a critical stage. The quality of the final product depends entirely on the accuracy of this sort. Mix the wrong types of metal and you compromise the purity of the copper, complicating every process that follows. The team here uses a variety of tools, shears, pliers, and specialized stripping machines. The work is fast, 
but precise. Every coil is unwound and separated into fractions. Bare bright wire, plastic sheathed cables, thick industrial lines, copper, and aluminum. The integrity of the copper must be preserved. It's the heart of the operation. Even the smell on the workshop floor, a mix of old plastic, metal, and dust, tells you that this is where the transformation begins. The coils are separated, the wires untangled, but the real alchemy is yet to come. What were once kilometers of cable are now fed into the heart of the plant. Some call it a shredder, others a dragon with steel teeth. The principle is the same. This beast devours everything. Cable fragments are loaded into a vast hopper. Inside, shafts armed with razor-sharp blades don't cut, they chew. Copper, aluminum, plastic, it's all torn, crushed, and ripped into small pieces. From there, the shredded mix enters a machine where physics takes over. A symphony of centrifugal forces, vibrations, air currents, and magnets goes to work. The light plastic is blown away into one stream. The heavy copper falls into another. The air is thick with dust. The hum of machinery is constant. Operators watch the metrics on their screens intently. This isn't just noise. It's the sound of rebirth. Just like the alchemists of old who sought to turn lead into gold, there are formulas at work here too. But instead of elixirs, there are weighing systems, calibration tools, and purification technologies. Because in the modern world, Magic is just well-engineered technology. Inside the furnace, fluxes are gradually added special agents that bind to impurities like oxides, dirt, and residual insulation. They float to the surface, forming a dark crust of slag. This is skimmed off by hand with long ladles, in a heat you can feel through a protective suit. It is one of the most dangerous jobs in the plant, but also one of the most majestic. Here, people witness the purification of old metal with their own eyes. They watch rusty scrap transform into a molten lake that glows like the sun. Even the sound is different here, a deep, guttural, threatening hum. It's the sound of copper saying, I am returning. Once the molten copper is cast into solid ingots, it still doesn't know what it will become. Its future lies in the hands of engineers and the rolling mill. The ingots are transported to the mill, reheated, and then forced through a series of giant rollers, like flattening a piece of red-hot dough. With each pass, it gets thinner. With each pass, smoother. This is how copper sheet is formed, or the feedstock for wire. Next comes drawing. This is where the copper is pulled through a series of progressively smaller holes, or dies. It stretches, thins out, but never breaks. Each die brings new precision, measured in microns. All of this to create a thin, flexible, gleaming copper wire. Sometimes, this wire will be insulated and buried in the walls of a new house. The average home requires around 200 kilograms of it. Sometimes, it will be wound into the motor of an electric vehicle. And sometimes, it becomes the delicate coil in a pair of headphones, carrying music from one heart to another. Every minute, over 17 tons of copper scrap are recycled globally. 
it's a metal that can be repurposed almost infinitely with no loss of quality. It lives, works, melts, and begins again.